Well, welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Navani. My special guest today, as you all, you guys all know him, uh, is Alex Swetsky, CEO of Amber. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me on, man. Again, uh, round two. It's wonderful. Uh, listen, uh, Alex, I've, I've seen you just recently uh, on a, um, doing a presentation. Was it a school or a college or something? A bunch of students where you made a presentation? University of Queensland. So, yeah, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was at the University of Queensland. So um, there's a couple young guys there who have... Um, who are Bitcoiners and they sort of run like a little trading group and mm -hmm. they wanted me to come in and red pill a bunch of university students on Bitcoin. So Oh, obliged. now I get it. Okay. And so, uh, so trading group means inherently also or implicitly <laughs> or explicitly also trading with shit coins. Well, no, not so much that. So, so it's kind of like the group's been running, you know, for, for years at, um, as far as I understand, I mm -hmm. could be wrong. Specific group, but like these kind of trading and you know finance type groups run at unis, irrespective of crypto. Um, I think you know before that they were doing stuff like you know they were exploring uh, normal financial markets and stocks and all that sort of stuff, and they probably fell down the um, you know the the crypto rabbit hole when you know trading became a thing um, in crypto. But yeah, the the two boys who run it, uh, shout out to Grayson and Lawson um really sharp young guys and actual bitcoiners um so no fucking bitcoins none of that stuff and yeah they wanted me to come and just deliver a presentation to all the students there and all the people that are part of the group to kind of really just reinforce why bitcoin is just so much more than just some other trading instrument and some other you know coin that you would want to just randomly fucking trade so that you can make more Australian dollars. Like they, they just wanted me to deliver the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. and, you know, okay. And because I'd seen your presentation, uh, you know, that PowerPoint presentation you always give. And uh, this time you went a little bit, even into subtle, more nuanced explanations. Now I tried to listen to the questions they asked you, but you know, because of the sound, I couldn't hear the question because usually when we hear the questions, you know, are they on the path to really comprehending the monetary properties or, you know, whatever emphasis you put, you know, into explaining why Bitcoin, you know, do, do you have, or did you have the feeling that they're getting it? Yeah, man. Look, I, I actually think we, um, I think I managed to red pill 50 kids, man. Like if, if though, like I was saying, if those kids like take what I said and apply it, and start accumulating Bitcoin and start studying it and start understanding it, um, they are going to be in the top 0.01% of the population of the world in 10, 20 years. Like they have such an advantage. And, and I was trying to really just reinforce that for them to say, look, you are so early and you are so incredibly lucky to be at this point in time uh, in, in this sort of broader transformation in the world that, um, yeah, like don't, don't squander this opportunity. Um, you know, get get your hands dirty and learn. And I, I was really impressed with um, the openness of the students uh, in that room. Like, there was one guy who put his hand up and had like an environmental question. You know, the usual. Uh, you know, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Bitcoin sounds profound, but you know, this mining business is like going to destroy the planet and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I, I think you might have heard me answer that question uh, during the talk. Yeah, and I really just reinforced like. Three things. One is the the analysis that was done on you know mining is going to blow up the world is fucking wrong anyway. Um, but even if it wasn't wrong, it doesn't matter. Like Bitcoin's the most efficient way to transform energy into a unit to which we can measure value in society. At the moment, the way we do that is we run all of this fucking financial infrastructure institutions and all of this um, these intermediaries and these checks and balances in the form of institutions to ensure integrity in the financial system. Whereas Bitcoin's integrity is literally transform electricity into a uh, unforgeable um, unit that can measure value in society. So that, that it's, it's the fucking shortcut. So it's far more energy efficient 
than anything else. So I sort of reinforced that second point. And then the third point was that because Bitcoin is fundamentally, um, you know, capitalist in nature, it's like the purest capitalist, you know, conception in history. Like it's, it's fundamentally natural in that sense where um, the incentive is to get an edge uh, and have more efficiency in the, the validation process so that you can um, earn more Bitcoin in your selfish attempt to, um, you know, look after yourself. If renewables are cheaper and they're becoming cheaper, um, it will be the best way to mine. So it is going to be the first time we've actually been able to properly incentivize the development of renewable energy sources without some fucking retarded carbon taxes and government incentives and all that sort of stuff. This will do way more for the environment and for um, energy production than any government in the entire world combined could ever think of doing. So yeah. Yeah, once I sort of framed it like that, this guy was like, I'm sold. <laughs> okay, good. You see, Alex, I mean, let's be honest and frank with one another, this whole garbage and indoctrination about, you know, I mean, this whole CO2 scientific fraud, we, there, is, there is no lack of energy. There is no lack of resources. I mean, the studies is the hardcore facts, 80%, 78 or 80%, what, what was it? The study of Christopher Bendix or whatever, Prove that 78 to 80 percent of the energy you know put into Bitcoin mining is renewable energy. We have more than enough resources. The CO2 scam. I mean, uh, do are people aware of that? That this is just a scientific fraud. It's propaganda. It's an agenda behind it. Do do they get it? I mean, no, because I think the the environmentalist movement um, is too strong. And look, whilst th this is the problem with. Um, with misinformation is whilst there's probably some kernels of truth and you know realistically the the low time sorry the high time preference society that we live in fundamentally discounts the future for today mm. we throw away any um any concept of you know uh environmental sustainability we throw it out the fucking window because fundamentally uh society is incentivized to worry about today instead of tomorrow um so so there is truth to the ecological movement um around yeah. not just blowing up everything we fucking have yeah yeah uh, but i agree with you that it gets blown out of proportion for the wrong fucking reasons because people want to you know create stupid schemes and you know be monger around things and you know, like yeah it, it's society is like fundamentally um I should stop using the word fundamentally. Society's got some fucking dramas, um, and we mm. proliferate those dramas by creating stories upon stories upon stories, and we create these veneer or understanding on things where you end up so far away from the truth um, that you know the whole thing starts to sound like a fucking lie. Um, yeah, and yeah. No, don't get me wrong. We have serious environmental damages and problems. That's not the issue, you know. Uh, I just think, you know, and the, and the solution is technology, you know, it, it is, we have, we have a lot of technologies, I think, and beautiful minds out there who can develop technology. We have so much plastic crap in all the oceans, but CO2, I mean, come on, CO2, we, nature needs CO2 for, you know, for survival. It's it just, it's just a scientific fraud, the whole thing. It's, that's, that's what I'm concerned about that, you know, all these youngsters also, you know, riding on this propaganda machinery <laughs> and not you know really doing their own due diligence and research on w what is what is what is carbon footprint anyway you know I mean, we have serious amount of pollutions that's, that's for sure what we need to do is we need to take their passion and we need to channel it so we because yeah. look at what they're interested in is not some um you know not, not not specifically the carbon but what what they're interested in is this um you know that they they've confused their internal virtue around, you know, wanting to do something for society and the environment with the misinformation that's out there. And they go on these fucking ludicrous paths of trying to, um, you know, do stuff for the environment through some sort of deranged government incentives or, you know, creating fucking fake food or, or whatever it is, you know, that they decide yeah. to do with um, in the name of the environment, right? What we need to do is we need to position Bitcoin as what it is 
Um, and we need to position it as the thing that's going to drive renewable energy. So kind of like what I did with that kid when he asked the question. We need to align their incentive um, with, um, I guess, two things. One, that Bitcoin's driving uh, renewable energy production. And number two is that Bitcoin fundamentally shifts um, the, the time preference that we have of today and the incentive around chasing yield um, at the cost of tomorrow and chasing consumption at the cost of tomorrow mm -hmm. um, into this, you know, different, this, this movement in society. Because what these ecological warriors are really interested in is like preservation sustainability. Well, there's no point in building, uh, you know, or, or trying to create uh, sustainability and all that sort of shit atop a system which is fundamentally not interested in that because the system currently doesn't give a fuck about the future. It cares about today, about consumption, about yield, about give me the next hit, give me the fucking next drug, give me the next like, give me the next uh, fucking car that I want to buy now. Like everything's now, 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 now. Um, and we can really get all of these, you know, you know, half of them become fucking social justice warriors, but we can get those people across to really, you know, drive, uh, you know, if they understand what Bitcoin actually represents, they'll realize that it solves all of their problems. You know, Bitcoin fixes this. <laughs> yeah, the um, meme does, yeah. Um, for them as well. Yeah, and yeah. Another person exactly and the question is you know is it worth it of course it's worth it because of all the you know symptoms and consequence and chain reaction of damages of the fiat system you know from ecological destruction to wars to poverty to inequality i mean this is i think i don't know whether people understand what is the chain reaction the consequences of this centralized you know fiat inflationary central banking system that's why we have all these problems is it worth it is Bitcoin worth it? Definitely, because it keeps the roots, the soil totally healthy, right? So, all right, um, you you posted somewhere on your on your Twitter that uh, the progression sort of, uh, or maybe you were trying to be conservative. I can't find that post anymore. You said, yeah, we are in the monetary. I mean, that is amazing already. After 10 and a half years or whatever, we, we are seeing in front of our eyes, you know, the monetary evolution of Bitcoin is a store of value. And soon, you know, as a disinflationary, total disinflationary sort of value. But you said something like it would take approximately 20 to 50 years until it would become the medium of exchange, you know, the payment, the, you know, the proverbial, you know, how can I pay you with my coffee? Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your take on that? Bitcoin has the function of medium of exchange for its store. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's payments and money in one, right? Um, so, so it has all of the elements and it's got unit of account built into it because you know, it has a mm -hmm. unit to account. So it's got all of the elements that you want in an ideal money. Um, you know, so it performs all the functions and it has all the attributes. It's scarce. It's mm -hmm. uh, portable costliness. It's divisible, portable, fungible, recognizable, etc. So it's got all the attributes you want and it performs all the functions you want. Um, the, the thing is we, we need to sort of step out of that and we need to look at Bitcoin's uh, evolution from a temporal perspective. We need to look at it over time. And, you know, for like, we want, we're all out here talking about, you know, building an emergent money. We want a money that is priced by the market so that the best good wins, um, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. We, we want to move away from money that is uh, by decree, that is told to us, you know, what it should be valued at. Um, we want to move away from that. So, by definition, you need the money to go through this progression of initially being some fucking collectible that people trade, you know, to becoming a more robust collectible, to becoming something that people speculate on because more capital is coming into it, etc. And it, you know, you've seen probably Murad's chart, the the Lindy mm -hmm. effect. Of yeah. Time. So it's literally the, the pathway we've got to track. Like if we, if you were to sit down and like try and map out in your head what's the ideal progression for a, you know, a, a market-based monetary instrument to, you know, to what is its ideal progression? It would be the progression that Bitcoin's going through. The problem is people just have such a shitty fucking high time preference. They're not patient enough to want to wait for Bitcoin to evolve such that the, the prevailing narrative 
shifts from just being, you know, primarily a store of value, like this emergent store of value to becoming more of a medium of exchange. That will come. And, and if you want to use it as a medium of exchange today, fucking go for it. Because exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, the fees are fucking expensive and blah, blah, blah. Because the strength of the, um, the, the strength of the opportunity at this point in time in Bitcoin's life cycle is around collecting this fucking thing because the rest of the world doesn't know how to price it yet. Mm -hmm. and that's the advantage that we have today by buying Bitcoin today and by accumulating it. The analogy that I give to people is it's like being the first guy who is collecting gold, mm -hmm. you know, these yellow nuggets of rock that nobody else thought was valuable. Everyone else was still fucking trading shells and shit like that. And they thought, look at this idiot who's collecting yellow rock. What the fuck is he going to do with those yellow rocks? You can't eat them. Mm -hmm. You can't use them. You can't, you know, wear them. None of that stuff. But he was collecting the, the object uh, that everybody would value their time and work later. Mm -hmm. That is a huge uh, opportunity for arbitrage. <laughs> like, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's happening in real life. Now, it took gold, you know, a thousand years or whatever, how long it took for society to achieve a consensus around um, gold being the best form of money uh, we had because mm -hmm. it had objective uh, attributes that mm -hmm. made it a bit. Bitcoin has objective attributes that make it the greatest form of money we ever had because it literally linked time and energy to a unit of account. Um, but I, I don't actually think you can get better than that. Um, and the opportunity now is that nobody else has realized it yet. There's a small cohort of us who get it um, and we're all collecting it. And you know, if you're stupid enough to spend it now, um, by all means, you can. Um, but I just think that the, the rest of the world that still holds none simply means your best opportunity now is just to buy the shit and hold it. Now. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so now I was just thinking about the time frame you mentioned because yeah, what do you think? I mean, when you are watching around the macroeconomical geopolitical events, everything that's going on with negative interest rate policies that, you know, all this shit hitting the fan right now, uh, 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 you know, bond yields are low, uh, the euro banks uh, could be, these are experts in Europe saying, you know, that the banks could just implode by the end of 2020. Um, I mean, globally, this uh, we 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 are we are you know full blown uh, going into a recession by the end of 2020. Do you think all these factors, uh, like zoomed out, if you look at it, it could happen much faster? Like you know, uh, it increase exponential liquidity of Bitcoin eventually. You know, and the and the critical the critical mass. I'm not talking about mass mass adoption with eight billion people. I'm talking about like maybe two hundred million, maybe three hundred, maybe five hundred million people. That's one of the. If, if you temper it with that last bit there, like if you're talking about a couple hundred people, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I would, you know, part of me wants to be optimistic and think that you know what's happening out there system is going to help accelerate this um and, and it will like all of these things are accelerants in some way shape or form and even if short term they have a negative impact on price because i still think bitcoin is largely perceived as a um as a risk on type asset you know and people holding it when they need fucking capital like it's liquid they sell it to, you know survive right so i think whilst you know a, an economic downturn or some sort of stock market crash may have a negative impact on price um Fundamentally, it's still an accelerant because those events deteriorate the, the broader trust in the current uh, financial, economic, political system, right? Uh, now, d do I think that there's some, you know, black swan moment that you know, drives Bitcoin to that next stage of adoption? I don't know. Um, I I'm almost going to say that uh, I think it's, um, I think a lot of this stuff is still just noise in the broader progression of something much larger. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that, yeah, they're, they're just momentary accelerants in my mind from where I stand. If, if I'm trying to zoom out, like I think the hardest thing to do with Bitcoin is to really just zoom out. Because when you're in it, like you, you're just seeing everything fucking happening so fast, you just don't 
realize that th this is really a long-term thing. And you know, Bitcoin rewards patience above all else. And it's not going anywhere. Like, <laughs> you know, Bitcoin isn't disappearing tomorrow. Like we've, we've already passed what I think is the, the point of no return or the critical yeah. mass return. Mm -hmm. like it's we're well past that um you know when everybody else gets on it like look here's what i'll say it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when mm -hmm. and how that looks um i don't know how it's going to look i i think it's going to be multi-decades actually now to a century before uh, everything runs on bitcoin but yeah I, I i'm in no rush i'm i in fact it can take as long as it fucking wants because while the price is low, I'm getting as many sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say, you know, there's no coincidence. I think there's a reason, there's a purpose why it's taking. And maybe I'm a little bit, maybe, you know, I mean, I do have this vision that, you know, people, I mean, why do you have Amber? You know, I mean, you're, you're trying to help people also, you know, you, you guys are trying to help people stack sets as easily, as intuitively and user-friendly as possible. And this is my segue to it, you know. Also, I want to know, What's demographics? Do you have sort of a demographics? What what age groups uh, are primarily on Amber? Yes. And when it's coming to Europe, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, so let's answer demographics. It's a good question. It's um, dude, we're we're basically eighty ninety percent Americans. So we we definitely are. Um, at one point in time, we had um, you know, like a a good chunk of uh, baby boomers in there. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's sort of really just millennials at this point so i mean we haven't started marketing yet so that's probably a function of you know who's referring it um and their key groups so once we start marketing i've got i'm putting together a really juicy um a really juicy report called investing in bitcoin the 2019 edition and we're uh -huh. there we're going to be comparing bitcoin to other asset class and all this sort of stuff and it's really written for um slightly older generation to, mm -hmm. to basically pierce their you know current non-understanding of what bitcoin is and, and i hope through that you know we can get more people on but c coming back to why you know we're building and but whilst you know one could argue that you know there is this altruistic vision that you know we want to get more people on bitcoin and everything like i'm gonna i'm gonna say this and, and some people might think i'm an asshole for saying this but i'm gonna fucking say it anyway is I have a selfish reason for building Amber, which is I want to build a fucking business. Of course. Adds... Yeah, you're an entrepreneur. Let's not forget that. Yeah, exactly. I want to make money by adding value to society. And for me, I think the biggest value that I can add is I understand Bitcoin relatively well. I understand where we are in the cycle of the narrative. And I want to take advantage of that understanding by producing a product that makes money so that I can make money as a derivative of that and I can transform that money into Bitcoin so that I can have more Bitcoin. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, like society and humans, like we're competitive and through competition, we, you know, we build and we make society stronger and we do all that sort of stuff. So, you know, selfishness as a concept has been, um, you know, vilified by society. You know, the yeah. idea that do something that is good for you is somehow bad. is It's fucking stupid. Like yeah. at the end of the day, you know, we are creatures whose primary motive is to survive and survival is selfish in, in nature. So I'm building Amber, you know, whilst I you know, love and care about Bitcoin and, you know, do all of that. And I, I love and care about Bitcoin primarily because I care about my wealth. Yeah. <laughs> and I know yeah. of a better system of, you know, storing wealth and, you know, storing my life's work. I, I don't know of a better thing than Bitcoin. And, the more people, you know, who are on that journey along with me, you know, helps enrich my life because then I have more good people to interact with and I live in a better society. So, so fundamentally, all of these things, you know, selfish in some way. No, and, and by the way, I mean, I mean, come on, I mean, you're executing, actually, you're doing exactly what the principles of Austrian economics is. There's a demand and there will be higher demand. And so you're fulfilling and you're satisfying the needs, wishes and desires of existing and potential clients, customers, people, right? Correct. So I'm, it's... I'm delivering value. And that's the fundamental... Exactly. Thing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I know, uh, uh, Alex, you don't have much time. Uh, what do you think is really important right now? People, 
I mean, uh, do you think that there's uh, there will also be older generations because I've been talking about this topic, like, you know, people like I'm helping people, you know, who are like 65, 70, 75. They finally got the hardware Trezor wallet. It's really not easy. And I think a lot of people in the Bitcoin community, you know, hard, you know, would it be, I mean, they're, you know, they have a big heart and soul and, but I'm like, sometimes they just don't get it that it, it really isn't easy, you know? I mean, I sit down with them, literally I sit down with them live and, and tell them for the 15th and 20th time how this treasure thing works, you know? And it's not easy. Can, do you think it, we can make it easier, a little bit more easier, more intuitive, you know, sort of a plug and play package? I mean, we're not even talking about full node, you know? <laughs> this is way too far. That is, again, uh... Bitcoin is like raw Austrian economics, raw capitalism. That is going to happen. It's it's just going to happen. It's, it's that, that like if there's an inevitability outside of Bitcoin becoming you know some broad based monetary standard, the other the the other inevitability is that enterprising entrepreneurs, businesses, companies, individuals, groups of people are going to build products and services that help abstract away the complexity. And deliver things that are simpler, faster, better. Simple as that. So, Cust okay. is doing, we're doing it. Um, I'm sure Ledger, Trezor, and all those guys will continue to develop better products, etc. Because guess what? If they fucking don't, somebody else will. Yeah. Um, will deliver a better product. Simple as that. And then people will buy that shit. So, um, yeah, I, I have. I'm not too concerned about that stuff. I just think it's um it's part of the process. Okay. It's the process. Like it's also very dangerous to go and build stuff that is like way too abstracted when we haven't got the you know the the more secure underlying stuff set up either. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you know we we it's dangerous to go and build too far ahead because you'll build it for nobody. People aren't ready for that stage yet. Um, so I think I think things are going at the pace they need to go. Um, you know, we all want to get people you know Bitcoin in more people's hands because you know you know like it'll be a fundamentally better world and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff but you know all, all we can do is just keep fighting the good fight keep you know doing these types of podcasts these types of communications keep helping friends and family that we know to, to get them set up on the status quo at the moment i think one of the advantages as well is like by definition bitcoin is so cheap right now because it is still so hard to access, to use, to store, to save. Like, yeah. you'll know when it's easy because Bitcoin will be worth a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's when it's going to be easy. So, like, you know, when someone asks me a question, it's like, when is it going to be easier? I'm like, when it's a million bucks. That's when it's going to be easier. So, yeah. you can wait easier or you can spend the time and put in some fucking effort and energy right now to figure it out. Um, because the reward for figuring it out is the ten hundred thousand x return that you're going to get from you know versus the person who's too lazy and just wanted it to be easy yeah yeah i mean it depends you know what kind of age group we're talking about you know most people over here they don't even speak english you know a lot of uh, materials like your material is in english we would have to really translate everything that you guys write and everybody else i mean who we talk about gg you know connor brown eric Ross, you know all these people they they deliver they produce so much precious materials but we would need a huge team like to trans because a lot of people they don't understand english over here this is the problem and i think it's not an intellectual problem i think but you know because pe most people like myself i mean i i i consider myself as the sticking measure you know for the average user uh, it it takes it takes a little bit of of course time patience and intellect to to uh, to really understand the fundamental technical uh, process and or technological you know security privacy um, how do you handle you know how do you set up a full node I mean I, I haven't I haven't done it yet have you I mean uh, it's it's it ain't easy I mean no it's not no it's um look for, for most people. Um, can I put it? I actually think long term, most people probably won't even interact with um with the Bitcoin base layer anyway. Um, you know, I, I think the fact that Bitcoin allows for the ability to do things without an intermediary is powerful enough as it is, because because it just offers you the opt out. Because then 
what happens is if you're an institution that's providing services on top of Bitcoin, um, should you not provide the best services, people can just opt out and just use, not fucking use you because they don't need you anymore. Whereas uh -huh. the problem with the current system is that you don't have an option. <laughs> so basically the financial institutions can do whatever the fuck they want and you've got to take it in the ass um, yeah. because you have no option. So, so I think th that's just inherent, that's an inherent strength um, of Bitcoin. It's like, you know, if, if an institution um, or a service provider or a product can make the experience for somebody better, um, that's inherently adding value. And as a mm -hmm. result, some people will pay for that. You know, like yeah. Carson, an excellent example. You can go and build your node with a Raspberry Pi and you can do all that sort of shit. And yes, you might actually save some money, but you spend $300 and you can abstract away a lot of that complexity with one nice Cox node, which is functional, it works, does a lot of the hard work for you, um, and you pay for that value directly. So, so effectively, you know, it, it, again, it comes back to just economic basics. You know, you yeah, save money. yeah, money. yeah. So yeah, I, I think whilst um, I agree with you, there is challenges around um, uh, educating people like in non-English speaking countries, like you know where you are and all that sort of stuff. I think what that also does, so the flip side to that challenge is that that challenge exists and creates an opportunity with it. Mm -hmm. Now, the person who decides to be the entrepreneur or the organization or community or the institution that says, look, there's a fucking gap here. No one's servicing these people. Let's go and do the work that's required to translate this and deliver it to these people. And you're going to own that market. And guess what your reward is? Fucking money. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You can then, you know, transfer yeah. that use money and off you go. Let me ask you, uh, 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 Alex, uh, do you think that people in Australia, Australia are op more open-minded, uh, you know, towards Bitcoin than, I mean, is that your feeling, your impression than compared to, I don't know, People, because they're so there are some conservative, Austria is pretty conservative, let me tell you that. You know, there's a lot of other kind. What's your feeling? What's, what's your impression? Interesting. I, I don't think um, Australia perceives Bitcoin um, in the appropriate way. I think that the consensus in Australia is that it's some sort of gambling or trading tool more than anything else. Um, because I guess we're not primed, like we haven't had any major financial crisis as well. We dodged the GFC, like all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, we have a pretty stable social fabric here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really understand it, you know, broadly speaking. Um, you know, or don't understand the, the breadth and depth or the profoundness of what Bitcoin, you know, really represents. Um, you know, do the good times last forever? Absolutely not. So at some point, we're going to be, uh, you know, wanting to understand it a little bit deeper. You know, there's pockets in this communities, you know, there's some really good um, Australian Bitcoiners. So like shout out to Stefan Rivera, Austin McCook, Rory Highside, uh, John Pratt. Like, you know, there's some really good people down here who um, who understand Bitcoin very well and, you know, doing whether it's podcasts, whether it's, um, you know, meetups and all that sort of stuff to help, you know, educate it more broadly. But, but I just don't think it's appreciated well enough um, in Australia. But in saying that, because we're an affluent country, um, you know, the the opportunity here is more about, hey, you know, can I invest in this thing and can I make fucking money out of it, right? <laughs> so what, what we're doing specifically with Amber is we're tailoring our messaging for that because that is the way, you know, we get it in people's hands. Um, and once they've got a bit of skin in the game, all of a sudden they want to learn a little bit more. And then you start to draw them in, draw them in, and you know, like push them down the rabbit hole, um, and you know, you've created another Bitcoin. Yeah, even though the pain point isn't felt as much, for example, as in you know countries like Venezuela, Turkey, Iran, Argentina, you know, uh, that's I think that's the art, right? Um, yeah, that's exactly right. So, so what you're doing here is you're not delivering something that solves a pain. What you're delivering something is potential pleasure. Yeah, and making them understand and imagine the future. Like you're literally creating that low time preference by giving them, I think, the vision, the understanding of what, wow, this is what my future uh, literally can look like in one year or 10 years, right? Okay. All right. So 
thank you so much, Alex. I'll put your uh, your Twitter, whatever, and your Amber uh, uh, things in the show notes. Uh, do you have anything else to add, or where you can find you, articles, or what you're up to? And look, I um, I think probably the one thing I'll add is I'm setting up my own um, channel. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. Yeah, people have been asking me for ages, like, oh, why don't you do stuff? And I'm like, look, I do all my rants on Twitter, but I think, <laughs> I think, you know, whatever we have here, 280 characters, it's, it's, it's not enough to say what you want. Um, and like, I've got all of these unfinished articles sitting on Hack and Moon and stuff, which I've got to get to and finish. But, you know, writing an article really nicely and just tidying it up is, um, yeah. it takes time, right? So what <laughs> I think I'll do is just, start doing some regular blogging um, or videos where I can just rant, talk about what I think. And before this call, I was actually recording my first one. So the first episode I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect the real vision um, episode between Raul Paul and um, uh, Dan. What's his Held? Name? Dan. No. Uh, not Dan Held. Uh, no. Dan, Dan Tapiero. Tapiero. Tapiero, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I the episode and I was like, yeah, they're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a couple things there where I want to be like, almost like a yeah. guide. No, no, no. That's the path to shit coinery. No, no, no. That's the path to other shit. Yeah. So I'm going to do a video that dissects theirs and put that out. And I hope through that video, people sort of pick up a lot of the um, the nuances, which are really important in honing and refining their understanding in Bitcoin. And um, anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll release that probably next week. And then hopefully I'll try and do like an episode yeah, every week, every two weeks, do a couple a month. And, um, and yeah, man. So like, yeah, I, I, the I haven't decided on a name for the channel, but I think I'm gonna call it Wake Up. Um, yeah, it's good, good. <laughs> wake up, <laughs> slapping your face. <laughs> Great. Well, Alex, I hope to get you soon back on my show, either one to one or a panel discussion. I'm planning a panel discussion with with a couple of experts because I had some. Uh, I had another expert and with Daniel Wingen, the organizer of the Value Bitcoin Conference. And we'll talk about uh, gold and Bitcoin. And you talk about nuances. And I, we, we, we thought, God, if we can like turn, turn him into a real Bitcoiner, this guy, because he's uh, not a gold bug, but he's like really pretty com much conservative. And if these experts, I mean, they, you know, they usually, you know, they're the ones who really talk about truth, you know, if we could get them understand the nuances, you know, of, uh, you know, and not 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 go on this uh, blockchain hype bullshit, and and really understand the properties and the uh, the essence of Bitcoin. This 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 is by itself a beautiful you know branding mar marketing multiplicator for you know for the for educational purposes. I mean you know, so yeah. So Alex, uh, have a yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank so you, thank you both. Bye bye. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history, Bitcoin.